a few words about myself. I'm Julian Fischer. I'm CEO of uh, of a company called Any Nines. Um, basically, what we are doing is what we are talking about here. We do um, application development platforms. We did a lot with Cloud Foundry and uh, the underlying automation technology of Bosch and now are in the transit uh, to move platforms uh, to Kubernetes. Um, I've been studying at the University of Applied Sciences in Saarbrücken myself. Uh, I graduated in 2006 with a diploma in uh, Praktische Informatik. Uh, I started uh, giving lectures in 2007, uh, starting with uh, Rechner Architekturen. Um, and then in 2008, I started with a lecture called Ruby on Rails, um, which I held like every year for about yeah, nearly 10 years. I, I skipped a few years and uh, one of my team members um, held the lecture a couple of times. So what I'm saying is um, I've been a guest lecturer um, at the University of Applied Sciences basically since I graduated. Uh, so my relationship to uh, to the University of Applied Sciences to the HTV is 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 rather close, and I I, I really enjoyed studying there. Um, I actually I listened to a few of the courses at the University of Saarland before I I went to the uh, to HTV, um, and I I made a very conscious decision to go to the um, University of Applied Sciences, and I I never regret that. So as such, I'm a, I'm a child of the same uh, university as you are. And um, I'm, I'm familiar with the curric curriculum, uh, that maybe a, how it was like five or seven or maybe 10 years ago. So I'm, I may not anticipate um, precisely what are the courses you already had, especially if, if you're not from Praktische Informatik. Are there people from uh, from other uh, computer science classes here? No, this is Praktische Informatik only, right? Ah, Kommunikationsinformatik is here too. So I will share my screen now. Let me check. Everything looks good. So uh, one thing I, I would like to mention here is while preparing the lecture, I've created uh, an online tutorial uh, about about Kubernetes. Uh, so I'm using this tutorial during the lecture, mostly, which means that if you miss a lecture, and the recording isn't published yet, which I'm trying to I'm trying to do um, publish the lecture uh, recording before the next like the next lecture starts so that you can catch up if you if you miss a a lecture, but even if you don't um, have access uh, to the recording, you can also use uh, the tutorial here. All right. My question to you would be: um, Did anybody of you already use uh, Docker or Kubernetes? Yeah, sure. All right. We have a mixed group, and in, the, in, the, in that in that sense. Uh, we'll go through the um, uh, containerization f before we go to Docker, before we go to Kubernetes. The the goal of the lecture is be familiar with Kubernetes. Uh, so go uh, Docker is basically uh, a topic that we will cover uh, to get you prepared for Kubernetes. So I'm, I'm myself I'm not really familiar with Docker very much because um, Docker itself is. Well, at least in my interpretation, is a building plot block um, that is used in, in building technologies such as Kubernetes, and Kubernetes in turn is a building block to build uh, application development platforms so, such as Cloud Foundry, for example, which is well a more complicated matter. But uh, putting that aside, um, I I'm personally am I do not advocate the use of Docker in production for various reasons that we could elaborate if you're interested in, but um, in this tutorial, we'll uh, we'll cover Docker to a certain extent. If you're very familiar with Docker, you may have even more experience uh, with Docker than I than I have. Um, I'm mostly restricted to building uh, container images with Docker uh, locally and then publish it to a registry. All right. So, goal of this lecture is to make you familiar with um, Kubernetes, uh, which means that as uh, the target audience, you as students 
you are the primary audience, uh, but basically anybody uh, with basic computer science knowledge, uh, maybe one programming lam language would would help to understand um, what we are doing here. Um, and some experience with deploying an application would be nice. But um, if that's not the case, following the tutorial uh, will give you a f you know, exercise with the primitives you'll be using to do the final exam. Um, the final exam is something that uh, will be an application that um, that you'll have access in source code. It's going to be a distributed system. And you basically have to wrap it and run it in a Kubernetes uh, using um, best practices in Kubernetes. Uh, final exam will be presented during the tutorial because I, I still uh, struggle a bit um, what the complexity of the application should be and whether it should be a, an application that's already existing. And if the application should already be existing, what is the um, what is a good choice? Um, because real world applications may be too complicated, but creating an application could be too too much work for you or for, for me. So I'm still trying to figure that out. But the final exam is going to be um, practical work, applying uh, what you've learned here to a real world application in the sense that there's actual source code, that it is a distributed system with different components. Uh, there's going to be state in uh, some kind of database and it, you'll have to wrap it up and maybe also, uh, you know, do some lifecycle management um, such as performing an update. So um, the training structure basically uh, is that there are two parts. There's a containerization part where we look into what a container is and um, what are the building blocks you will be dealing with if you're using containers. Um, once we've covered the, the basics, uh, for example, what is a container? What is a container image? How does a container, dif uh, you know, is different from a virtual machine? Um, what is a container registry and how do these things play together? Uh, we'll have a look into Docker, um, which is the primary tool if you want to download something to get, um, you know, to try a Docker image or a container image or build a container image, then Docker is a very nice tool as it's available as a Docker desktop, uh, basically for every platform. Um, the entire tutorial uh, assumes um, that there's a Linux or Unix operating system underneath. So if you're still stuck with Windows, at some point you'll have some additional little riddles to solve because I don't cover Windows um, in this in this tutorial. It's um, it's not impossible, but um, you may have to you may have to figure out a few things yourself. Uh, one way to work around such a uh, a problem is. Um, Get yourself a virtual machine and 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 use use that for developing the things. But I don't think that you'll have so much contact with, um, well, let's say, shell or or anything that this may be even not necessary. But you'll have to figure it out yourself. And your feedback in this regard is also welcome, so that I could um, you know find find out whether uh, Windows is maybe more important than I thought.